In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. I don't know what you guys are experiencing or feeling today, but I feel this level of excitement in our liturgy, right? This is the first time that we're welcoming the choir back after their summer hiatus, and the altar is full of more altar boys than we've had in months. It's a little cramped back here, actually, which is a beautiful thing, right? And we're starting our Sunday school ministry today, right? This beginning of the new ecclesiastical new ministry year is a really exciting time. I don't know if it's permeated yet to you. I hope it has. But if not, let me tell you why I'm just so excited today. So the first time in three years as your priest, I don't have to worry about what ministry is going to look like, how it's going to be affected by COVID and things like that. It's the first time I actually feel like I can speak and minister to you guys throughout the course of this year in the way that I want to without having to worry about anything else. And so that makes me really excited. And we've worked hard over the summer to bring all of these ministries to life. And so today, as we begin this ecclesiastical year, this ministry year, I want to take a break from my typical reading of the scriptures and expounding upon the scriptures just to speak a little bit about our ministries and to start off by giving great praise to all of our ministry leaders. Maybe once in a while it's appropriate to take a step back and just observe and be amazed by what you're surrounded by. That's what I'm doing today. We are so blessed here at St. Athanasius to be surrounded and filled by ministry leaders who love the Lord and love to serve him and love to serve his people. We are blessed that the people in charge of our ministries here have a servant's heart and a mind set on the Lord. They give their time, their talent, their resources, all to make sure that through the different ministries of St. Athanasios, God is made present. That's really the purpose of ministry. The purpose of ministry is to make God present, to experience him, to come and to know God through these ministries and to be known by God through these ministries, to come and experience him and come and be experienced in our true and authentic selves. It's this place of belonging. Our ministry leaders do a wonderful job of making this church a place of welcome, a place of belonging, a place where we can come and be a part of God's people and feel his presence in our community. Right, but why am I gushing so much? It's because these are not just words. This is actually what happens here in our ministries. The Lord's work is done when we come and gather together for worship and for all the other things that we do as a parish. Right? So just as we're beginning to welcome back our ministries from our summer hiatus, I want to invite you to experience everything that we have, all of the wonder that I have at the people and the presence of God here in our parish. That's why when I spoke to the ministry leaders over the summer in preparing for this year, I told them that our theme for this year, what I want them to focus on, what I want to become second nature for us as a community, is the words from the Psalms, from Psalm 65, come and see the works of the Lord, come and hear. Right? This psalm is about grabbing people by the hand and leading them to Christ so that they can know him, so they can see him, and they can be seen by him. Right? But this is not just some abstract thing. If we continue to read on, the next part of the psalm says, I will declare to you what things the Lord has done for my soul. So this is about recognizing the works of God in your own life and sharing them with the people around you. That was the charge that I gave to all of our ministry leaders, that their job is to go into the community and to say, come, see the works of the Lord, hear what he has done for my soul. Whether that's telling someone about the time that you saw Christ and you met him in the face of someone that you served, as our men's group serves, dinner to the homeless through Hesed House, whether that means that you found the warmth and the embrace and belonging in the fellowship and the sisterhood of our Philoptikos, whether that means that standing in the liturgy, 
You felt the presence of the Lord because of the beauty of our choir and our chanters. Whether you came to learn about him, his teachings, through our youth groups, our Sunday school, our Bible studies, or any of our other educational opportunities. Christ is just so present here in our community. That's just some of the work that he's doing. After we dismiss today, we'll invite you to join us for our beginning of the year welcome back picnic. Unfortunately, in the St. Matthew Hall due to the rain, but still taking place nonetheless. And each of our ministries will have a table set up we invite you to go and speak to them. Go up to our ministry leaders and ask them, what has the Lord done for you? How is it that this ministry can make me feel God's presence? But beyond that ministry fair and our opportunity to share with one another here, I invite you to share with me to help keep our minds focused on this invitation and the experience of the Lord, I invite you, email me, text me, call me. I want to hear the works that the Lord has done for you through the ministries of our parish. How have you met Christ here at St. Athanasios? How have you felt his presence, his belonging? How have you found your true and authentic self within the ministry and the worship and the community of our parish. Send those to me, I'm serious. My hope is that I will be able to put those in our communications and our champions and our emails so that people around our parish can see what it is the Lord has done for you. Tell me, I desperately wanna know. But there's another part and another challenge that's been laid before our community. And that challenge comes directly from our Metropolitan, Metropolitan Nathaniel himself. When he was here on Holy Saturday, celebrating the Divine Liturgy and bringing four new people into our faith and into our church through baptism and chrismation, he said that he was blown away. He commented, he just kind of like went off the cuff at the end. If you were here, he just kind of rambled a little bit with a ton of energy. And he was talking about how that liturgy was one of the most beautiful liturgies he's experienced in his life and how much energy he had. And it was the end of Holy Week, but he was on fire because of our community worshiping together, because of our hymns, because of the children running around and collecting all the flowers, because we were welcoming in new members of our parish through baptism and chrismation. And he said, from the same spot that I'm standing today, that he had a challenge specifically for St. Athanasios. And so I'll echo that today. That challenge was for us to grow, to burst the seams. He told us specifically that he wanted us to come to him in a few years' time, saying that we need to figure out what to do with this building because it no longer holds our community. And then he got specific. And he said, how do you do that? He says, I want everyone to bring two people with them to church in the next year. He didn't say, I want you to invite two people with you. He says, I want everyone to bring two new people to the church. I'll echo that and say, if the Lord is truly present, why wouldn't we want to grab people by the hand and say, come and see the works of the Lord. Come and hear, and I'll declare to you what he has done for my soul. And so I invite you, encourage you, challenge you, to go out into the world and find two people, two people who desperately des desire to know God, two people who desperately desire to be known by God, and bring them to our parish. But you say, Father, like, I'm not that outgoing. I don't like talking to strangers. I don't want to seem like the weirdo who's inviting people to church, right? God forbid we seem like the weirdo in our neighborhood inviting people to church. Use these words. Come, see what the Lord has done. Hear, and I'll declare to you. We can't just tell people, come with me. It's a nice community. They've got a great Greek fest. I'll get there in a second. We have to tell them about the true work of God that takes place in your heart and in this community. 
That is what we are seeking to do with all of our ministries. Make God present for you. Make God present for those who have yet to come. To be a place where God is so present and accessible that anyone who walks into the door can feel that this is the house of the Lord and truly he dwells there. When the Russian people were looking for a faith, they went to Constantinople and they went to the worship service in Hagia Sophia and they came back to their prince, Vladimir, and he said, so what did you find in Constantinople? And they said, we didn't know whether we were in heaven or on earth. We don't know much about this faith, but we know one thing after being with them for one service. Truly God dwells there among mankind. This is the experience that strangers have when they come and worship with us. Turn to your friends, turn to your neighbors, turn to strangers even, and invite them to come and participate in the worship of the church and the ministries of the church. Share with them the things that God has done in your life. And as I said, festivals. There is in fact no better time, no easier time than a festival for us to do this work. Invite your friends to come and participate, to come and eat and share and enjoy all of our music, our food, our culture. And then when they're here with us, talk to them about our faith. Take them from the hall into the church. Tell them about the icons. Tell them about your saints. Share with them about a time when you felt God's presence here in worship and invite them to join. I hope you can tell how excited I am about this year because I see all of this before us. I see the works of the Lord in all of our ministries and I know that if we will just share what he has done in our life and for our souls, that so many around us will find what they have been searching for, that the world will come to know and be known by God here in St. Athanasios. The pain that people around us are feeling will be washed away. The isolation that people are suffering will turn into community and fellowship. The search for meaning and purpose will find its conclusion in the resurrection and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we conclude today, join us in the hall. Ask one another. Talk to our ministry leaders. Ministry leaders, be bold and share with those around us. You might think you know what a ministry is about, but until you hear how God has touched and changed someone's life through a ministry, you'll never truly appreciate it. Go into that hall with curiosity about the work of the Lord and boldness to proclaim that same work to those around you. Amen.